Yes, this is a good sign. Hello everyone. As you can see, the breeding birds are settling in nicely. There's actually an unexpected little egg under there. I wasn't expecting eggs for another four or five days, so I'm a little surprised to see this one. I'm not even sure if it's going to be fertile or not. She should lay her second egg this afternoon, and I'll leave them there for a few days just to see if they are fertile. But it was a little surprising to see an egg there the other day. If I do let these eggs hatch, I will be able to tell if this guy is the father or not. There was only one cock in the hen side where this hen was kept in the other loft, and he wasn't a recessive opal like this guy is. So if the babies are recessive opal, this guy is definitely the father. And if they're not, then he's definitely not the father. Either way, I was pretty surprised to see that egg. Now we will have a look at the rest of the pigeons today, but before we do that, I'd just like to go inside and do something that a few of you guys have asked for. We'll have a look at a few of my pigeon books, and I'll show you the ones that I recommend. Let's go inside now. Okay, it looks like Friedrich wants to join us for the book reviews, but there are five books that I'd like to show you guys today. So let's take a look at them one by one. The first are these two, both by Wendell Levi. There's The Pigeon and The Encyclopedia of Pigeon Breeds. We'll have a look at The Pigeon first. This book is really a must-have in your pigeon library. Let's take a look inside. Now, if we take a look at the contents, you can see this really covers everything. The history of pigeons, different breeds, anatomy and physiology. It even has a little section on genetics. Right through to diseases, diet, housing, even commercial squad production, which is something we don't see too much of these days. But there's a whole chapter on that. This book's about 700 pages long, and it covers just about anything you could want to know about pigeons. It is slightly out of date. It was written originally in the 1940s, and I think it had a few updates towards the 70s, so if you get a later printing, it might be slightly more up to date. But it is an old book. But despite its age, there really haven't been that many other books that really cover as much as this one does. This is quite a complete and almost all-encompassing book about pigeons. It can be a bit hard to find. It's not in print anymore, I don't think. But I've left a link to some Amazon listings where you can pick one up if you would like. They do tend to go fast. It took me a while to get this one. So if you'd like it, make sure you pick it up quickly and don't miss out. And then we have Levi's other book, The Encyclopedia of Pigeon Breeds. And this one's great. It actually has full-color pictures. Levi's other book has mostly black and white pictures, but this one's full color, it's really great. This one's even longer, it's closer to 800 pages. As you can see, mine's a ex-library copy, because just like the other one, it can be a bit difficult to pick up, so I just picked up the first one I could find. But if you want to know just about anything about almost any pigeon breed, it's probably in here. Of course, this was written by an American, and doesn't include all of the Asian breeds, the Chinese, Indonesian, Filipino breeds that are available these days. And it doesn't have all the Middle Eastern breeds that are becoming more common as well. But it really has a lot of information and I'd definitely recommend picking up a book like this. And then we have two books for anybody interested in genetics. There's one by Hollander. And if you know anything about the history of pigeon genetics, you know the WF Hollander is pretty much the father of pigeon genetics. And then we have one by Axel Sell. And this one's about the most up-to-date book you can get at the moment. So let's have a look at Hollander's book now first. Now this one, although it is a book, it's more like a collection of articles than a cohesive book. But it goes through a lot of the basics of pigeon genetics and also looks into the history of some of the different genes, how they were discovered, and just the research that's gone into pigeon genetics in the past. Again, this book can be a little hard to find, but I've heard from Dr. Hollander's son, Paul, that an ebook is in the works, so I'm not sure if it's going to be a paid book or a free one, but hopefully not too much longer, and we'll be able to get this one online as well as in print. But really, if genetics is your thing, this is the book that you want to pick up. Uh, this comes in English. There's also a German version, if you're more comfortable speaking German. And again, this one has full color pictures, and it has information on most of the genes that have been described at the moment. Some of the, you know, brand new ones that aren't quite as well understood aren't in here. But even some of the most rare genes at least have a little paragraph in this book. So if genetics is something you're into, I'd definitely recommend picking up this one. Again, I'll leave links in the description to all of these books. This one can be a little hard to get on Amazon, but it is also available from Axel Sell, the author himself. So I'll also leave a link to his page if you can't find it on Amazon. And finally, we have Pigeon Health and Management 
And this one is by Dr. Colin Walker. Now he is an Australian pigeon flyer, but he's also an expert pigeon veterinarian. If you've enjoyed any of the health videos that I made in the past, most of the information came from Dr. Colin Walker. And I, I can't recommend enough the books that he's put, he puts out. Just looking through the contents, you can see that this is really a complete health guide for pigeons, for both racing pigeons and for fancy pigeons, but it's primarily for racing. He uh, Dr. Colin Walker is a pigeon flyer who is also a vet, like I said. He actually has a more recent book out that I haven't picked up yet, and I'm really looking forward to it. If anybody would like to pick me up a gift, that's definitely what I'd like to see. Now, some of these books are fairly expensive, but really I would say they're worth the price. These books were written by pigeon experts, and they have information that you can't really find anywhere else. So, like I've been saying, I'll leave links to them in the description if you want to pick them up. Check on those links. Some of these books can be hard to find. They're not always in print, but if you can get your hands on them, I would recommend them. All right, let's go back outside and look at the pigeons. All right, we're back. And these guys have done the same thing. <laughs> There's an egg there as well. This is really surprising. They've only been in these boxes for a week now. And I usually like them to lay their eggs after about 10 days. Not five or seven, like we've got here. I'll have to have a think about what to do with these eggs. We'll see if they're fertile anyway. These guys are going well. She is sitting on the nest. And you'd think, looking at this behavior, that there'd be an egg there. But there's not. She'll probably lay in a couple of days. But she's just letting me know that I'm not allowed to have a look. This is her nest. Her box. And she doesn't want me here. This cockbird's much quieter. It might change once there actually is eggs. But he hasn't tried to fight me yet. He might even be a little bit scared of her. <laughs> These guys were both sitting on their nest. But as I opened the door, they both hopped off. Uh, like you guys know, these guys were paired up at the old house, so they should lay in a couple of days as well. I'm really hoping we get a little almond or stipper baby out of them. If we're really lucky, it'll be the brown black almond like I'm hoping for. But either way, I'm hoping we do get at least one. It'd be nice to have an almond flying this year. Here we have our nice little red checker hen and her partner up there on the perch. A couple more days, maybe towards the end of the week, there should be some eggs in here as well. And not long after that, there should be some champion little babies in this nest. I'm really looking forward to seeing these ones come out. And finally we have this guy. He really is my favorite at the moment. He is so tame. He always wants to come and say hello. And the good news is I have seen a little bit of breeding interest in this box over the last few days. Mostly from him, not so much from the hen. But given that he's been chasing her, it won't be too long until she gives in, and we shall get some eggs in this nest as well. This guy really is my favourite though. My wife has named this one Gus, so say hello to Gus everybody. He's just so tame, so quiet and so friendly. And also very good looking. I'm really happy to have this guy in my breeding box at the moment. And I'm looking forward to his babies too. I'm planning on keeping him for a while. He's, he's probably going to be a permanent stock bird. So I hope we get some nice little brown daughters out of him. And although this is a colour breeding project, the pedigrees of both of these birds are actually quite good. So I am expecting, or at least hoping, that we'll get some good racing results out of their young, no matter if they're brown or blue or black. Anyway guys, that's the end of the video today. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked my book recommendations. There's links in the description so you can have a look at them again. I definitely recommend those books by Levi. They are a bit expensive, but they're also a little hard to find and full of great information, so they're worth the price if you wanted to pick those up. Anyway guys, that's all. Have a good one, and I'll catch you next time.
Yes, this is a good sign. I'm very happy to see this. 